Taylor Swift gets snubbed by the MTV VMAs. Travis Scott fails a Kylie Jenner quiz. And Pete Davidson denies giving his ex his late dad's necklace before giving it to Ariana. All that and so much more on today's Rundown. Hey you guys, welcome back to The Dur. It's your girl Renee Ariel and I got my girl Naz. Yay! We have so much to talk about today, including the fact Kourtney Kardashian was slut shamed by her boyfriend on Instagram. Yikes, we'll have more of that later in the show. But first, let's talk about Taylor Swift because she got snubbed by the MTV VMAs and fans are not happy about it. So the 2018 MTV Video Music Award nominations came out on Monday, but one superstar was noticeably missing from a few major categories. Taylor Swift's Look What You Made Me Do was nominated for Best Art Direction, Best Visual Effects, and Best Editing, but Taylor didn't find her name in any of the big categories, including including video of the year, artist of the year, or song of the year. Fans are particularly upset about this snub as Taylor actually debuted the iconic Look What You Made Me Do video at the VMAs last year. One fan tweeted, quote, no VMA video of the year or best pop noms for Taylor Swift and Look What You Made Me Do? Really, MTV? You draw VMA viewers by premiering it on your show last year and then don't give it the recognition it deserves? And then my favorite tweet of all said, quote, Excuse me, VMAs, Taylor Swift did not just bathe in diamonds, drag other artists, use a plane, ride a motorcycle, bring back her old personalities, serve us amazing choreo, and break the 24-hour Vivo record for you to just snub her like that. She clearly had the video of the year. Some Swifties, however, came up with the theory that Taylor is actually getting the highly coveted Michael Jackson video Vanguard this year, which is why she didn't get any nominations in the big categories. First of all, Renee, that tweet is just so hilarious to me I love because that tweet. it is so true. No one can disagree. People that don't even like Taylor Swift, when this video came out, it shook the world. It shook the internet. We remade it here at Clever. Like that was such an iconic video. I remember when the song came out, I was like, mm. I was like really bummed because I was hoping for like a uh, um, shake it off, you know? Yeah, I like was the just more Taylor for something Swift. more upbeat, but it wasn't. But then when the video came out, I was like, OMG, this all makes sense. So yeah, I do think this is a snub. I completely agree. Um, the Look What You Made Me Do video was everything. I know for us in the office, like that's what sold us on the song. It was everything we wanted it to be and more considering her hiatus. Mm -hmm. It was the perfect comeback. It was a perfect clap back and she made fun of herself. It was so good. So I have no idea. What videos are even being nominated? Uh, how was it snubbed? What video is better than that? Also, I want to know what Joseph Kahn's going to say, because you know how he's very, very outspoken on Twitter. So mm -hmm. we'll keep you guys posted if he tweets anything. OK, you guys, so you know those rumors that were going around that Pete Davidson had actually already given his late dad's necklace to his ex, and now he's given it to Ariana Grande, and people are really upset about that, naturally. Well, Pete is now denying those claims. So if you've been following Pete Davidson and Ariana Grande's relationship closely, you probably know all about that photo he shared of Ari wearing his late father's FTNY badge around her neck on Saturday. Well, to give you some background on that, Pete's father was a New York City firefighter who died in the attacks of 9-11, so understandably that necklace holds a special place in his heart. When Pete shared the photo, it raised more than a few eyebrows because it appeared to be the same necklace he had given to his ex, Cassie David, around five months before they split. When several fans called him out on re-gifting the necklace, Pete explained on Twitter that the one he gave Cassie was a replica, whereas the one he gave Ariana was the real thing. He said, quote, I had a bunch of replicas made. My sister and grandma also have one. The one Ari has is the one my dad actually died in and the one he wore his entire career and the one I've worn for 17 years. I've actually never taken it off other than for SNL or work, so it means a lot to me. Hope this helps. Please learn to be nicer and not to assume the worst in people. It's a terrible way to live. Much love. I'm in shock. I know, I know he's now engaged to Ariana, but him and Kazi were together for a long time. So imagine being the ex to hear that you got, had the replica and that was something he was giving to, you know, close family members and close, well, mainly family members and then significant right. other right. to then find out that the new girl in his life that he's been with for a month has the real deal that was so special to him, is so special to him. I'm shocked. But the thing is, he's engaged to Ariana. He wasn't engaged to Kazi. And what if she knew that it was a replica? What if he's like, this is a oh, replica of my dad? No, I, I'm you know? sure she knew because he wore his, right. the actual one everywhere. Right. It's just the fact of 
what that means to him and the fact he wore it everywhere and clearly was not planning on or it right. doesn't seem like planning on giving it to anyone. Mm -hmm. So giving it to Ari, like what that means to him and what Ari must mean to him. It's just like it's, a stab to the heart. For yeah, him, think? like as an ex, I would be like, oh, <laughs> what? I think you know? she's fine. Her dad's Larry David. I'm already super jealous of her. That's true. <laughs> but I will say it's so sweet to see how much they mean to each other and just mm -hmm. the things they keep doing for each other. It's so, so sentimental. I know. Can they come out with like a documentary on YouTube or Netflix? Just like following Please. them through this whole, you know. I mean, we get that on their Instagram. So. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, Courtney is in Italy living her best life, and she posted a photo, and now people are thinking that her boyfriend, Giannis Benjamin, is slut shaming her. Like I said, Courtney is on vacation in Italy with her kids and her boyfriend, and she posted this photo on Instagram looking amazing in a bikini with her butt facing the camera. Courtney captioned the photo, don't be shady, be a lady. And I'm totally stealing that for a future post of mine. But people are freaking out because her boyfriend commented on the photo saying, quote, that's what you need to show to get likes. So sure to all of us who don't know their relationship or the context of this comment, this sounds pretty bad. It sounds like he's slut shaming her, but let's explore the various alternatives that may be happening here. So first of all, they are on vacation together. So it's not like he's not there and is therefore jealous that she's on the gram looking like a snack. Second of all, what if he was just kidding? It could easily be an inside joke. So Giannis has since deleted the comment. Meanwhile, Courtney's fans have flocked to his page to leave comments under a photo of him in swim trunks saying, that's what you have to show to get likes, which is honestly hilarious. Courtney's been dating Giannis since last October and allegedly they actually had a brief breakup in March during which they unfollowed each other and then deleted their Instagram pages. I, you know, I love Courtney Kardashian. I feel like she can do no wrong. I think her and Giannis are so hot together. He is such a babe. And honestly, I feel like this is an inside joke because they're together. So you know when you're like next to someone and you comment something, it's like yeah. you're obviously in on the joke. He obviously mentioned something to her about this beforehand. Maybe she like said it to him and he like commented. But obviously the internet, like, you know, things got out of hand and yeah, had I to delete it. I for sure think this was just like lighthearted, a joke between them. I don't think he was intentionally like trying to slut shame her. I think he was making a joke about slut shaming because I right. think Courtney probably gets comments like that all the time being a mm -hmm. Kardashian. Like they mm -hmm. get all the shade in the comment section. So I honestly think that's where it came from. And then probably when everyone went after him, he's like, oh no, people will have the wrong right. idea. It was a joke. So right. he deleted it, but it, now it looks like more shady, right? but I, I don't think it was anything. Like, it's her boyfriend, they're on vacation together. Right. Like, but we whatever. should take this time to note that it is okay to post whatever you want. 100%. Live your best life on Instagram. No slut shaming. Get those likes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so in a recent video clip that GQ released, uh, it was with Kylie and her boy toy Travis, and he doesn't seem to know her all that well, you guys. <laughs> so Kylie sat down with her baby daddy, Travis Scott, to test him on how well he knows her for GQ, and Travis Scott, like, epically failed. So the quiz in the video was basically 23 questions all about Kylie, and then they kept score of which ones he got right. So some of the questions were, what did she crave when she was pregnant? What sports did she play in high school? And Travis did seem to get a lot of the questions right, but kind of failed when he couldn't answer this one. What are my dog's names? Norman. Okay. Lady. Lady? Or... Lady? And you guys, Travis couldn't even name all four of Kylie's dogs. You don't know them? <laughs> Rosie and Harley. Oh, Rosie, Harley, yeah. Come yeah. on, got it. We didn't get that right. That was a no. But even though Travis couldn't get that answer right, there was a lot during this video that he did get right. Also, Travis and Kylie looked super amazing on the cover of GQ. And in their interview, they opened up about their meet cute. Apparently the two met in Coachella of 2017. Travis was playing at Coachella for one of his stops on tour. And Kylie just, you know, naturally got on the bus and joined him on tour and rode off into the sunset. And you guys, the rest is history. I thought this video was so funny, except I cannot believe he doesn't know the name of her dogs. She has four dogs. She's not some crazy dog lady. Like it's four and he could only name one. Four is a lot. That's, you can, can you name four people? <laughs> then you should name four of the dogs. Especially when I was telling, okay, so Naz brought up a point, like they're traveling all the time. They're a famous couple, yeah, like whatever. Maybe he's not at her house a lot. He had maybe... nine months to get these names. 
Nine months, the girl wasn't leaving her house and he could only name Norman. We all know Norman. People who don't know Kylie know Norman. And you couldn't freaking name any of the other three? We all know Norman. <laughs> Well, speaking of Norman, things are about to get back to Norman. Hang on to your diapies, you guys, because the Rugrats are coming back to Nickelodeon. So it's been well over a decade since the beloved animated Nickelodeon show Rugrats went off the air, and now they're coming back bigger and better than ever. Well, maybe not bigger since Tommy and the gang are still babies, but you get the idea. The Rugrats revival was revealed on Monday when Nickelodeon Paramount Pictures announced that they're bringing back the iconic toddlers to the small screen for a 26 episode series. But that's not all you guys, Nickelodeon and Paramount also revealed during their big announcement that Tommy, Chucky, Phil, Lil, Susie, and Angelica are all set to star in a new live action film featuring CGI characters. <gasps> So Sarah Levy, the COO of Viacom Media Networks and interim president of Nickelodeon, said of this revival, quote, Rugrats is hands down one of the most celebrated cartoons in TV history, and we are thrilled for a whole new audience to meet these iconic characters in brand new adventures. What was true in 1991 when the original show premiered is still true today. Kids are fascinated with the world of babies. We can't wait for today's kids to meet Tommy, Chucky, and pals. I am so, so torn about this reboot because- Really? Yeah, because I'm so excited, obviously, that Rugrats are coming back. I was obsessed with the Rugrats. I was actually obsessed with Cynthia, Angelica's like <laughs> best Cynthia, friend. Cynthia, she's a really cool dancer, Cynthia. Cynthia. <laughs> Get into the groove now, I think. Yeah, <laughs> all the songs from the Rugrats movie are iconic. Anyways, you guys, I get so torn because, I don't know, they're gonna introduce new characters and I just feel like, why are we doing so many reboots and not creating like new things that we all can enjoy together? And sometimes I feel like when people reboot things, they kind of ruin the magic of the first version. Um, but it is also great that kids these days will be able to experience what we did mm -hmm. with all these kids. Um, I don't know. And then I'm also concerned, sorry, I feel very oh, no, strongly no, no, no. about this. I, I'm girl. also concerned that the same voice actors aren't gonna be able to come back for these characters. So yeah. that it's like not the same nostalgic Rugrats that we're used to. But we'll see. I'm all for Reptar making a comeback because Reptar is also the ish. Yeah, I'm real excited for the reboot, the 26 episodes. I just, I'm gonna watch it as a 24 year old adult. I'm gonna for sure watch it. The only thing I'm a bit skeptical about is a live action film with CGI the CGI, characters. yeah, that freaks me out a little. Like, they already tried with the all grown up and it didn't do that good. And now they're trying with like CGI. Like, let's just, just keep it. It's what we're good at. You know, the OGs. Let's just keep it with that. But I'll watch it still and hope for the best. We'll still watch. <laughs> All right, you guys, before we go, we really want to hear from you. So I am very passionate about the fact that Travis Scott does not know all four names. It's only four of Kylie's dog. So let me know in the comments below if I'm overreacting or if he should freaking know her, that's like her other children, if he should know all four of their names. Let me know right down in the comments, you guys. We also want to know what you think of Taylor Swift technically getting a snub at the MTV VMAs. Should Look What You Made Me Do have been nominated for Video of the Year? Let us know what you think in the comments section below and hit us up on our socials. I'm at Naz Perez on Instagram. And I'm at Renee Ariel on Instagram. And we'll be back here tomorrow. Bye-bye. And then click right over here to see Kim Kardashian clap back at some Kylie haters. Ooh, that sounds good. Click over there, you guys, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Somewhere here? Just right here. click it. <laughs>